Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to yet another Gunpla review and this one right here just came in today and it's so exciting that I had to get it done all in the one go. I unboxed this, built this, and now I'm reviewing it all in the one day just because it is so awesome. This, of course, is the high grade Universal Century Messer Type F01 from the delayed yet still upcoming movie Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway's Flash. So right off the bat, just to let you know just how awesome this is and just how massive this kit right here is for a high grade, there is a Gundam side by side with it. The standard granddaddy Gundam is dwarfed by this behemoth. Also, like I said, I did build this today. It didn't take me that long at all because it's super simple, but at the same time, so big and so impressive. Anyway, if you do want one of these big, thick, awesome mobile suits of your own then there's a link down there in the description and you can get yours as usual from those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. But anyway, let's get right into the review. So as usual before we take a look at this absolute beast of a mobile suit, let's take a quick look at the box right here. So first off, absolutely awesome box art right here. That's gonna be P Bandai. This right here is a box as thick as the mobile suit itself. Another hype image right here on the side. There is the blurb about the Messer in case you want to read about this. Catch up. And one thing you might notice there, this takes massive design elements from the Sazabi and the Giradoga to the coolest Neo Zeon mobile suits ever. And it looks like the perfect love child. Around here on the second side of the box, we've got a whole bunch of info on the model kit. From the weapons, I will mention that that rifle is not color accurate. To the gimmicks, like that awesome super ab crunch and cool moving shoulders. To another whole bunch of features here and loads of awesome design elements like these moving super mega premium butt flaps there. But anyway, let's check out the mobile suit. In here we get a whole bunch of runners. All of these are new for 2020, no reused parts, but I don't know if this is a mistake or not, but runner B2 does not have the section here removed like you'd normally see in a kit. So this is a duplicate of this runner, which would have had only... I think two parts for the arms, if not four parts for the arms. The rest of the parts of the head, skirting, armor, and everything's left over. That's peculiar. As for what we get once we put it all together, we've got the Messer itself, as well as these accessories. Like I mentioned, that rifle is not color accurate. This is all Federation-style equipment on a very Xeon-looking mobile suit, which is a really cool combination. And sadly, this is lacking some yellow color accuracy in some places. I did not use the stickers, as I think it looks pretty cool without them. Definitely better than it would look with stickers applied. But anyway, let's check out the mobile suit. So like I mentioned, I threw the high-grade messer together in a couple of hours. This is one deceptively simple kit. For something that's so big, something that's so awesome, this is a very quick, simple, yet impressive build. This right here kind of feels a bit like a Reborn 100. And I mean a good Reborn 100 like the Zaku 2 Kai. It does not have any polycaps whatsoever in its build, so it is quite solid. It does feel a little bit on the hollow side, but that's a good thing, which means there isn't too much weight. And there's a lot of awesome design elements in here. This is super nice to build. I did film a build of this, which I might put up here or somewhere else if you want to check that out. But all I can say is I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this build. As for panel lining, I just used a single brown panel liner marker here and there on this kit, pretty much every line on it, and it looks fantastic. Detail wise, this is very nice without going overboard. The color accuracy is quite good, but like I said, there is some yellow stickers we'll check out soon. But on the whole, once finished, this is one impressive looking kit. I am blown away by how cool this is. This has shot up to my, well, into my top five Xeon looking kits. Because technically it isn't a Xeon kit, but damn, is this thing beautiful. So there is that full 360 degree spin so you can see every angle of this absolute beast for yourself and decide on whether you want it or not. I will also mention that the color may change every now and then saturation wise in this video and that's because the camera is having a little bit of issues with the color of this guy right here. So what you're seeing right now is more akin to what you would see in reality from what I can see on the monitor right now but I will just mention this is quite the subdued color tone. So if it's coming up as bright or saturated red or anything like that, that is not the color. It is a very, very subdued tone. Xeon style kits are quite often the kits to get the rough end of the stick. So there is a couple of issues with this kit that I've noticed. This may be because I built it quite quickly, but we do have quite the seam all around the head here. You will not see this from a distance, but up close, you will notice that there. 
There are some more on other segments like this back section of the arm, which you might want to close up yourself. And there is a bit of a mold line up there on the shoulder, but then again, nothing all that bad at all on the whole. This thing looks crazy awesome and it's definitely a kit I'm looking forward to seeing some mad awesome customs of. It is just that awesome. Also, as for a bit of a note on the stickers in here, I think the majority of these are for on the pipes. So two, three, and both of the fours are for fixing this section and this section of the pipes on either side of the face. They should be yellow. And yeah, that is essentially it. As for what it should look like, that is it right there on the manual. So the only other part is the segments inside of the front skirting armor. And the biggest defender is pretty much the entirety of the rifle. This should be in green, a kind of bluey color, and gray. But then again, for a Xeon looking kit, that's not so bad. So as for a size comparison, once again, there it is beside a standard size Gundam. That, of course, is the Gundam Beyond Global. One of you guys on Instagram asked me, is it bigger than the silver bullet suppressor? So there they are side by side. So general mobile suit mass wise it is, but with this whole rig on the back, this one is a little bit taller. There's an example of it beside a small Gundam. There it is beside a very, very big Gundam. That is the Penelope from the same movie. That thing is ridiculously big. And just to satisfy my own curiosity, there it is beside the real grade new Gundam and the real grade Sazabi. So it gives you a good idea of just how big it is, essentially around the size of Sazabi. So finally, there it is up on the shelf for that shelf presence test. And this doesn't even have any of its equipment equipped yet. And this thing will still stand out in any collection, especially a high grade collection, because what you see here is mainly master grades. For example, there it is beside the master grade F90, which it dwarfs. And just for the sake of seeing its size compared to a master grade, there it is beside the master grade granddaddy, the origin version. This is one big and awesome high grade kit. Now let's check out what comes with it. So once again, there it is with absolutely everything that it comes with, and let's check everything out one by one. So as for the type of hands we get in here, these are, I wouldn't say your standard high-grade hands, these are a little bit different, something more akin to the Reborn 100 line. So they're big old back-opening hands, but they're chunky and big. We do have a second one in here, this is for holding the rifle, and that's all it does, so I just leave it attached to the rifle. As the Messer is made by Anaheim Electronics, that does mean it has some Federation style gear, which is pretty cool. So this does come with a pair of beam sabers in yellow. Pretty standard affair right here. As usual, when not in use, you can pop out the beams like so. And as for the storage of the handles, well, that makes it time to check out the shield. The shield is quite basic. It's a big old, well, big old blocky thing. That's what it does, it blocks. There around the back, it is a little bit on the plain side. There's nothing really in the line of detail, etc. Well, there is a lot of detail, it's just not necessarily color accurate. Something about this down here makes it look like there might be an expansion for a different version of the Messer in future. And up here we've got a very basic rotating attachment point. So as I was mentioning, when the beam sabers are not in use, they can just be squeezed on in here. This does feel like a bit of a loss risk. They kind of barely fit in there, but when they're in there, they're hard to get out. It just they slide in so easily. So with the shield adapter, you have the choice of, well, you have no choice when you're popping it on, you pop it on like that. But there are two attachment nubs here, so you can attach it onto the back or onto the side. And I'm gonna go with this side, why not? We're gonna have to flip up the shoulder and there we go, simple as that. And I did lose a beam saber. Get back in there. So next up in here, we do have the beam rifle. This is not color accurate, sadly, just like I mentioned before. It does look quite cool. It's a nice design. It's made out of two parts sandwiching together, the barrel and this little sight segment right here, which does have a bit of a hollow back, which could be better, but then again, it could be a whole lot worse. Attaching this is simple. It just pops into the holding hand like this. This is a very nice hold. You then just pop the back onto the hand as usual. And then it just attaches in like so. So when I was playing around with this earlier on, I did notice that this is a little bit on the floppy side, but once again, this is easy to tighten up. Just put a little bit of super glue on the ball, let it dry, then just pop it back in. Otherwise, pretty much perfect. So the Messer right here does not have the standard three millimeter butthole. Instead, we've got a base adapter in here, which makes it once again, kind of like a 1-100 kit. So this just, slides on in here at a little bit of an angle. So it does kind of point forward like you can see there. And then you should be able to use this with any 
action base with a 3mm peg. So like I've mentioned before, this is a big kit, but it's not that heavy. Even a Figma stand has absolutely no issue in holding this up whatsoever. Pretty damn awesome. So now moving on to the build and the articulation, and the first thing I'll say about this is the build is crazy good for something so big, something so, well, Xeon looking. This is built like a brick. I love it. And I guess that's where I get into the one thing I don't love straight away, and that is to move the eye, you need to pop off the whole front of the face. It's simple enough to do in order to rotate it. So as far as I know, there is no easier way to do this than to pop the head off, turn the eye, then slide it back on again. But it's still cool that you can move that eye. So this definitely surprised me. We've got a Xeon looking suit with somewhat of a giggity, giggity, giggity off. Whoa, yeah. So I'm going to leave that in. This is a great joint. As soon as it's off, I'll show you. This can drop up and forward like that. And we have this one which moves forward and back like this and a ball joint on top. But the connection point is so deep in the head and it's such a big old head that a lot of the time the leverage will just pull that right off. So it's a little bit less than the sum of its parts. But if you're careful and once you get used to it, you can get quite a bit out of this. But occasionally it will end up popping off on you. But you will get some pretty nice poses, including a nice head turn, once again, for such an abnormally, awesomely shaped kit. But that's not it. This thing's torso is insane. First off, we've got this moving joint in the shoulder, which allows all this to pull out. That lets this move forward and back like this. This is in both shoulders, well, of course. And that is pretty cool. And if that wasn't cool enough, this thing rocks one crazy ab crunch. Just Take a look at that. Once again, for a Xeon looking kit, this is unprecedented. This kind of looks like a face. But yeah, once again, that's him all the way forward. And there is it all the way back. Very, very nice. Up the shoulders, then we do have the full 360 spin right here. The shoulder armor can move independently to the arm. This little flappy, flappy section can move. In proper Xeon looking fashion, we do have a spiky right shoulder. This can move as well, not quite as much as the other one actually. It can move just as much as the other one. That is pretty cool. So next up there is both arms all the way up. Once again, quite impressive. That full spin at the upper arm. Next up there is our bend at the elbow that is double jointed and perfect. Ball joint at the wrist that does what a ball joint does. Full spin. Even though we do have these cool joints that allow these arms to move forward and back, we cannot cross the arms. Sadly, that would have been pure perfection. The rotation here at the waist is quite restricted. So it cannot move any more than this. It would have been nice to get a little bit more out of that, but what can you do? The front skirting armor right here. That is just on some ball joints. So pretty basic movement right there, up and down. We'll see what we can get out of the kicks very soon. Bringing this around to the back now. And just to show you what is going on in here, I'm going to try and take off this skirting armor. These, as far as I know, are some kind of air brakes. So these can move quite a bit. We've got one, two, three points of articulation, not including the final pivot we'll get on the end there. Basically making this thing have one of the most technologically advanced butt flaps. And then that happens while I'm praising its butt flap. But yeah, some pretty rocking butt flaps back here. Inside the waist, we've just got a standard waist, so no dropping mechanism or anything like that in here. At first, this looks terrifyingly blocked up here, but we do have some extra movement inside of this. I don't know why they didn't make this a split part like they do in a lot of modern kits. I guess they just wanted it to look the way that it looks in the anime. But as for the kicks, first up, there is the kick all the way out to the front. So this is going to knock off the front skirting armor. So that's it without knocking it off. There it is, knocking it off. So moving all the side skirting armor, there is the leg all the way out. So it is blocked because they did not split it up here. So no splits for the messer. Next, the kick out to the back. A little bit blocked by the butt flap, but what you expect out to the back. We don't have the full 360 degree spin at the upper leg. As you can see, this does cause the armor to split up there a bit. But that is about all we're going to get out of that, sadly. Now with the leg off to check out the rest of what we've got here. There is the bend at the knee, so one and two, so not so bad for such a bulky, bulky boy. Down at the ankle, then we've got forward and back right at this point. 
and a side to side pivot, not too much right there. And this little armor flap moves up. That's down, not up, down and up like so. Anyway, let's get it down on the ground to see what the functional movement is. And of course, what I mean by that is what we can get out of this without lifting the foot off the ground. So there it is all the way to the back. So not great. There's the leg straight. There it is all the way to the front. So that's not, well, it's neither here nor there. And finally then, there it is, side to side pivot. So this isn't going to be doing a lot of awesome ground poses. That is for sure. Also, nothing down at the foot. Almost forgot this kit has an awesome set of thrusters around back, which are very nicely designed. Each of these elements is separate, so top flaps can move up. These hilarious looking thrusters can move up and the bottom parts can move up. So these are all separate and can move independently. So on the whole, when it comes to the articulation on the high grade Messer, this is one of those kit sets oddly better than the sum of its parts. There's a lot of blocked articulation, especially from the waist down, but you can still get some nice poses out of this. The waist armor can pop off every now and then, but that's nothing new. But for something that's a Xeon looking kit, you can get quite a lot out of this, especially from the waist up. So I'm still impressed by this kit right here. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and I love this kit. I absolutely adore this kit. Well, for its pros, it's definitely one of the most beautiful kits I've seen in a long, long time. And Bandai have been pumping out some beautiful kits lately. Color separation-wise, it's pretty good. It is missing some yellow parts, but they're not the biggest deal breakers. The weapon could be a little bit better, but I think all the important features are where they need to be to make this thing look astounding. Once again, I do feel I have to keep it in mind that this is a Xeon, or should I say Xeon looking kit, which means they usually get the short end of the stick, so it needs to be ranked against those sort of kits. High grade Xeon kits, at least any of the ones that have come out lately or recently, haven't been the greatest. That goes for everything Xeon, or just general universal century enemy suits. So this thing is special in what it does pack in. So if this was just your bog standard federation kit, I would probably be ranking it a high gold tier. But because awesome Xeon style kits are very, very rare, I'm giving the high grade Messer platinum tier. It just feels so good. It looks so good. It's impressive. This is going to spawn some of the coolest looking custom painted kits ever. And I cannot wait to see them. Anyway, if you do want one of these of your own, there is a link down there in the description. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. And I will see you next time. So once again, I can't end this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video, as well as liking and subscribing. And of course, special thanks to my channel members and patrons, Craig Jury, Kaiser721, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhart, and Sean T.